Welcome to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen. And I'm David Kerr. And we're going to be looking at topics that are of interest to our community, both regionally and to the state. Welcome to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen. A major issue facing the world today is cyber terrorism or cyber warfare. And we are here at the Stafford Regional Airport and we're with an expert in this topic, which is Jim Wiggins. Jim is the Executive Director of FITSI, the Federal IT Security Institute. So welcome, Jim. We appreciate you coming. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate being here. And I guess the first thing to sort of ask is what is cyber terrorism or cyber warfare? Okay. Yeah, so that's a really uh, a good question. Uh, great place to get started. Um, cyber terrorism means different things to different people. Um, but basically what it represents is it represents uh, acts of what we think of as traditional terrorism being... Uh, facilitated on um, online via the internet, uh, using technology um, as a weapon, um, and it can be used for things like uh, defacing websites, uh, pursuing political agendas, social agendas. Uh, it could also, in some venues, be looked at as uh, potentially the exfiltration of information that has value and be used against a nation or an organization. So it, it's really just the, the the leveraging of technology to to, to pursue um, what we traditionally think of as terrorist-related activities um, against organizations and against nations. Well, and it's sort of interesting because we're familiar with the terrorist activities with the various bombings and whatnot. So how, how would a group think that doing it with, uh, on the Internet would actually get them the same type of uh, results? Uh, so traditionally what they might do is they might target uh, infrastructure-related components within a society. One example might be like the power grid. You think of, for example, all the electricity, everything that we rely upon uh, is connected to the internet. And so a group uh, like ISIS or Al-Qaeda or, or another type of group out there uh, could potentially use uh, cyber-related weapons against our own infrastructure. Uh, and just think about it, if, if they wanted to, they could maybe target the, the dead of winter and they could shut down the electrical grid conceivably so that people's homes wouldn't be heated. Or conversely, uh, at the high of summer, when people you know, are dealing with obviously extreme temperatures uh, and, and make it so that their, their air conditioning units might not operate. And so, so that's one example of, of how they might actually target. Uh, they could go after financial institutions, you know, the stock exchange. They could go after uh, organizations that provide key services uh, to, to our society. So, um, so th th those are some of the, the, the ways in which um, cyber terrorism could manifest itself relative to the, um, you know, some of these particular groups that are out there. And uh, um, as we, as a culture or governments, whatnot, uh, sort of delve, develop ways to deal with it, they're sort of shifting um, how they're doing it. So how has it sort of changed um, over the last several years? As, uh, or is, is it basically still the same way? Good question. So I obviously, try. yeah. So I mean, it's it's like a cat and mouse type of thing, right? We 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 come in and we identify weaknesses within our infrastructures and our technologies, and, and we, we 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 patch them or we address them. And and um, the 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 adversaries that are out there are, are very creative. They they have a certain level of ingenuity about them. Um, you know, when you go man against man, it's really what what we're talking about here. Is you're dealing with uh, people's ability to think outside the box and, and really identify uh, new ways of doing things. Um, so that same ingenuity that is such a, um, a strength in our society also can be used against us in some ways. Uh, and so historically what we've seen is a lot of the type of weapons that have been used have been initially relatively rudimentary. They've been targeted at like what we call denial of service, where they try to shut down things like we talked about. But now the adversaries are, are starting to use more advanced types of, of weapons. They're using malware, malicious code, malicious software. Uh, you may have heard of things like ransomware, where people are actually locking up other people's systems and their information and forcing them to basically pay money in order to be able to unlock it. Um, so those are some examples of how the evolution has, has transpired over the last couple of decades. Um, and it will continue, right? So as, as, as you know, we continue to try to thwart certain types of uh, adversaries, they'll come up with new and ingenious ways to basically attack us. Um, and, and you mentioned some of the type of ta targets that usually go for, but uh, so, and, and just sort of elaborate a little bit more so that people understand um, in this type of, of warfare, what are the usual targets that they're going after? Yeah, so it can be governments. I mean, governments tend to be a big um, 
opportunity just because governments have a lot of really useful information, uh, obviously information about uh, citizens in the society, a lot of what we call PII, personal identifiable information. Uh, corporations will have trade secrets that are out there. You know, think about it if you're a, a, a tech titan out, a tech a titan out there. If you're a Microsoft or if you're an Apple, you have IP, intellectual property that you want to safeguard, and you don't want it to basically fall into the wrong hands. So, you know, th there's a whole host of different types of targets they go after. Um, they could even go after individuals, right? So they could target a specific political leader. They could target a specific business leader. Um, so again, it's, it runs the full gamut. It's not just one particular type of um, victim that's identified. It can be corporations, it can be governments, um, it can be individuals, it can be movements. Um, in fact, we've seen cases where there have been, you know, for example, some groups will attack other groups in the cyber dimension because of the fact that like uh, a group like Anonymous, who's a well-known hacking group, doesn't like what um, ISIS or some of the other terrorists are doing. So they go out there and they start shutting down their, their Twitter feeds and things like that. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of poten potential victims out there, a lot of potential targets that are being uh, looked at. And they, they use different techniques for different targets. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, for example, if you were going to go after the government, you'd be doing one type of thing. But if you're going after a group, you're shutting down... There, there, are other, there are ways of doing things and communicating. I think it really depends on what the, the, the motivators are, right? If it's financial, that's one type of thing you're trying to do. You might be trying to steal information. If you're trying to pursue a political agenda or a, uh, some type of social agenda, religious agenda, there might be another particular type of, of objective. It might be, again, trying to shut down certain services and certain capabilities. It might be trying to scare the constituencies that that organization or government basically supports. So again, it's, there are different uh, types of targets and there are different types of, of, of vectors or vehicles that are basically used. And how would a, a target know that they have been breached or violated? So that's where it gets a little challenging, right? Because just with the plethora of technology in society today, it becomes difficult for us to, 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 to sometimes easily identify uh, intrusions. Uh, it's, there have been reports out there that some intrusions will go you know, 18 to 24 months before an organization even knows that it's actually happened. Um, and so it really requires um, the knowledge, skills, and abilities of the staff and the right kind of technology to basically be able to detect those kind of intrusions and be able to recognize them and be able to have uh, a method to basically um, to deal with it. All right, and as we go to our break, which is sort of an intrusion, um, we thank Jim for talking to us about cyber warfare and terrorism. And when we come back from the break, we're going to go more in depth in some of the um, ways that they're doing it. And so make sure you come back after this intrusion, and we'll see you in a few moments.